A Hungarian noblewoman who partook in scenes of torture so terrible it's beyond comprehension, and then proceeded to brutally murder as many as hundreds of people in equally cruel ways? This is the noblewoman who bathed in blood. All right. Welcome to the program. We're joined today by Stephanie and Steele. Stephanie Steele, say hi to America and the world. Hey, America. And? And the world. Sorry, world. For those of you joining us for the first time, I'm Roman Riverbottom, and this is Terrible Tales, a game show where I eloquently recount the story of a terrible historical event. I'll quiz my adequate guests about the topic. The person with the highest score at the end wins a special secret prize, one that is unique to each episode and is only unveiled at the end. This is simply to raise the suspense and has nothing to do with distracting you from our limited budget. The way that you will play is you will buzz in by smacking your leg. Can we test our buzzers? But I feel like because of like, you know. The... You can slap me. No, I have, I have uh, uh, supernatural hearing. Supersonic? No, just supernatural. That you know, your strengths get, uh, but I don't have a sense of smell. So it's enhanced everything else. I also see you guys beautifully. Today, we embark on a journey to 17th century Europe to look at who is possibly one of the most notorious female serial killers of all time. There will be torture and there will be blood. This brings me to my first question. You guys ready? <laughs> Woo! Yes. All right, kind of. The name of the alleged notorious serial killer at the center of our story is Elizabeth Bathory, a noblewoman whose family ruled which part of Eastern Europe? A, Transylvania. <laughs> B, Bosnia and Herzegovina. C, Albania. Oh, oh yes. Steel. A, Transylvania. <laughs> you are correct! Oh, yeah. That is 100 points for you, sir. Awesome. Well done, well done. Sorry. Much like the infamous Vlad the Impaler, from the years 1570 to 1613, Elizabeth Bathory's family controlled Transylvania. This is also a period of time in Europe where torture was apparently shockingly commonplace. Elizabeth Bathory was born on August 7th, 1560. The niece of the King of Poland, Elizabeth was educated from a young age as a young woman of the upper class. But beneath this standard appearance of nobility, Elizabeth and her family harbored dark and vile secrets. In 1597, Elizabeth Bathory married Count Francis Ferenc Nadazdi, a noble from Hungary. I, I believe I pronounced that correct. It sounded good. Yeah, sound so, good yeah I mean, I'm convinced, so. Nadazdi. Okay, well, just in case, if I didn't pronounce that correctly, uh, they can dub it in post. Can... Nadazdi also possibly enjoyed torturing his servants. Some people even claim he taught Elizabeth some tactics as punishment, such as lighting oil-soaked pieces of paper between the girl's toes on fire, and covering servants with honey and letting bugs eat away at them. That's not a very nice thing to be taught. Now, Stephanie, Steele, how would you convince Elizabeth that torture isn't a nice thing to do? I would start to torture, and at the last second, right when she stopped freaking out, I would stop. Okay, like, so I'd grab the knife, listen, Elizabeth, and then I would stop. So you're sitting Elizabeth down, to not torture. So your oh. first piece of advice probably shouldn't be torture a little bit, mm -hmm. which is what I, I meant like, like the, to me. I jabbed. You know, it was, needs, a, it was like a Elizabeth. A you just need to go outside and get some vitamin D. You know, get some serotonin, get some natural sunlight up in there. You know, maybe there's just too much dimness in that castle. I don't know, but I think it's time to go outside and just you know get some fresh air. Between those two answers, one advocated for a little bit of torture and the other one asked for a little bit of sunshine. I think the points are going this way. Yeah. Congratulations. That's 100 points. Oh, do I clap for myself? Okay. Yeah, clap, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, yeah, clap it up. Yeah, clap clap it, up. it up. Soak it in. It was the evil appetites of Nadazdi that probably influenced Elizabeth's impending crime spree. But aside from him, there was also one other person involved that makes this whole story feel like it's out of an HBO fantasy show whose, I don't know, eighth season was, I don't know, poorly written and, I don't know, tragically disappointing and, I don't know, it might have been a Game of Thrones, I don't know. But my next question is, who was this person? Is it A, a religious oligarch, B, a witch, or C, an Eastern European cult leader with roots in early Satanism? You have to slap in. The last one, Hit. the very specific one. Oh, I'm so sorry. I oh got God. really specific with something that does not matter. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was but steal. That one. Steal for the steal. Uh, it's witch or someone. It's witch or or oligarch. Um, oligarch. Yeah, that one. Oh, unfortunately, you are both freakishly incorrect. Uh. The answer is which. Her name was Anna Dorvula. And after Elizabeth's husband Nadezhdi died of an unknown illness in 1604, Dorvula moved in, and the real horrors began. Many suspect that it was Anna Dorvula that influenced Elizabeth to pursue her killing spree. Some take the story even farther. 
suggesting that she instructed Elizabeth to kill and bathe in the blood of virgins to preserve her youth, which means that my blood would be at risk. <laughs> when Nadezhdi died in 1604, he left Elizabeth Bathory his entire estate, including the castle Kashtis that she resided in. This gave Elizabeth free reign and unchecked power. Around the same time, peasant women in the area began to disappear. There were rumors of cruelty and death surrounding their disappearances. Their fates at the hands of Elizabeth Bathory were put into question. Are you too comfortable? Are you doing okay? Um, I think so. Are you, are you comfortable? Are you doing okay? I'm sweating yeah. more than I've ever sweat in my oh, life. Okay. <laughs> but I'm trying to, trying to just keep going. Yeah, um, I'm proud of you. <laughs> So, it's yeah. just the, the, all the all this talk of torture. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. brutal. I know really? that he likes it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know that you like it a little bit, but yes, because of I your advice. I asked to be on because of this episode. Because you knew that it would be a torture episode. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can respect that. Though the following testimonies were only uncovered towards the end of her reign of terror, witnesses at the time would eventually describe that Elizabeth would lure servant girls by offering them the chance to work for her. According to Lisa Andrews' writing in the book Encyclopedia of Murder and Violent Crime, she would then kill the girls by starving them freezing them, mutilating them, and torturing them. Other accounts of her atrocious actions include mentions of her using tools such as knives, razors, and wax, and even biting pieces of flesh off of her victims. Ew! According to some books, several people who lived in the same town as Bathory witnessed servant girls with facial disfigurations and burned hands, and one girl even came running out of the castle with a knife still in her foot. Many people also suspected that Elizabeth would extract blood from her victims by having her servants hang the victims upside down to drain as much blood as possible from their wounds. Yuck! These eyewitnesses' accounts and rumors were no doubt shocking. So, that brings us to our next question. With so many testimonials, what do you think happened next in the story of Elizabeth Bathory? She was caught and executed by the King of Hungary? Did nothing happen because who cares? They're just peasants. Or did the townspeople invade the castle and burn Elizabeth Bathory at the stake? I, I think she was burned. You believe she was burned at the stake? I think- Ooh, If only, if only, because it but, sounds like that would be great. What? No, yeah, yeah, I think I'm wrong, but I also thought that nothing happened. I don't think you're wrong, you are wrong. Oh my gosh, okay, fine, I'm wrong. Just let's, okay, what's your answer? Um, can you repeat the questions? I cannot. Okay, A. You're going with A. Unfortunately, that is both incorrect. Okay, so then I'm yeah. <laughs> the correct answer is actually B. As we've come to learn throughout history, no one cares if you die unless you're a rich person. And because these women were servants and had hardly had any rights during their period of history, their murders went completely ignored. Like, literally no one cared. Not even the King of Hungary at the time, who simply went along his merry way. So, a direct question for you, Steele. If you were the king of Hungary who went along his merry way, despite the fact that a bunch of people were dying at a castle, what kind of plans would you make for that evening? Um, plans? You mean not? Like, what are you doing? Not like, p go take her to court? No, like it's not it's the, do that. It's the weekend. What are you doing? Oh, um, I don't know. Going to the beach with my friends and, you know, laying out, getting some sun. All right, king's going to the king of Hungary's going to the beach with his friends, and just laying out. Moving on. As the story goes, if Elizabeth Bathory kept killing servant girls, she probably would have never been caught. But fewer and fewer servant girls were willing to work for Bathory, and heightened suspicion over her crimes inspired her to switch course. She was now going to target nobility to satisfy her bloodthirst, which was a huge mistake. And Steele, why do you believe it would be such a mistake to start targeting the nobility? Um, and is there powerful? Like you said? Short and sweet, Steele. Short and sweet, I love it. <laughs> to lure nobility to her castle, Elizabeth Bathory opened up a boarding school and invited the children of lesser known nobles to attend. Within three weeks, everyone was dead, and upon questioning, Elizabeth refused to release the bodies. She claimed that an illness had killed them all, but this explanation was not gonna fly. Which is finally when King Matthias II of Hungary sprung into action. Shocker. Hearing rumors of nobles being murdered at Kessel Kashtis, King <laughs> Hearing rumors of nobles being murdered at Castle Kashtis, King Matthias II sent Elizabeth Bathory's cousin George Thurzo to investigate the accusations against Elizabeth. Thurzo soon accumulated countless testimonials that would give insight into how Bathory possibly committed hundreds of crimes. One priest. Sorry, it was chocolate shake. 
You had a chocolate shake before. Can we get a fan? Yeah, is that, is that okay? <laughs> Can we get a fan? One priest, Pastor Janos Ponikenus, claimed to have found the bodies of nine girls in the catacombs between the castle and his nearby chapel. In addition, when Thurzo arrived to investigate the premises, his team found a girl who had been beaten to death in the hallway leading to the cellar. And once they arrived in the cellar, three of Elizabeth's servants were cleaning up the remains of another beating. They found the victim barely alive. Thurzo's investigation blew the whole thing wide open. In 1610, Elizabeth Bathory was finally arrested. Three of her servant girls who assisted her in the murders were also charged and executed by being burned at the stake. Elizabeth's cousin, Thurzo, bargained a deal on Elizabeth's behalf and ultimately spared her from execution. Instead, she was locked away in the chambers of Castle Kashtis until her death in 1614. Some reports stated that she was literally walled in, while others claimed she was merely on house arrest. Some people remember Elizabeth Bathory as the most notorious female serial killer of all time. And though no physical evidence of her acts remain, the stories of her vile actions will live on forever. We're clapping for that? And now I'm gonna fire off a list of heavy metal bands who have a song, album, or are named after Elizabeth Bathory. Ready? Yeah. Cradle of Filth, Urzabeth. Elizabeth, Urzabeth, Urzabeth, Elsbeth, Bathory, Venom, Darkwell, Countess, Candlemas, Sun O, Urzabeth Bathory, God Dethroned, Bathory, Elizabeth Bathory. Oh. Lots of creative names here, people. Lots of creative names. Leave it to heavy metal bands to find a way. Now, guys, for 666 bonus points. What would you name your heavy metal band if you were inspired by Elizabeth Bathory? Oh. Yes, Steve. Bloodbath. Headbath? Bloodbath. Oh, Bloodbath. Well, did you say that? No. No, I said Headbath. Right. Because I, I said thought that's bath. what you said. No, that doesn't make sense. Sounds like a candle scent. I would say maybe Liz Beyond Bath. Liz yeah. Beyond Bath? Yes, Why? yes. <laughs> it sounds cool. <laughs> Steele gets the points. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Now it's time to announce the winner. Have we tallied up the points? I believe we have. And our winner today is... Steele! Tremendously well played. You didn't slap you. in all that often, but you got them right when you needed to. Today you've won a Band-Aid anti-aging moisturizing cream, and a leather studded bracelet. Congratulations. Thanks, That's Matt. That's self-care right there. Absolutely. Thank what you. are you gonna do with uh, your prizes when you get home? Oh, you don't wanna know. Oh. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Terrible Tales. And for those of you still sticking around, here's a random Getty video that the producer found while doing research on the topic. FYI, they typed Elizabeth Bathory into the search bar. If you look closely somewhere in the video, you'll find a hint for what next week's episode is about. If you catch it, leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys. Thanks, Matt.